In this video, I am going to talk about the glossary provides explanations for different words we use online. These are not legal definitions, you should watch full this video to better understand Canada's immigration terminology, academic program, a post-secondary program that awards an academic degree, diploma, or professional certification. This program is often delivered at universities, colleges, seminaries and institutes of technology, accompanying family member or accompanying dependent. A spouse, common law partner, dependent child or dependent child of a dependent child, grandchild, who plans to immigrate to Canada with the principal applicant. Accompanying family members are included on the application, address, an address is a place where a person is living right now. It can be identified by such things as a street number, street name, apartment number, city, town, province or state and country, for example, a student from Mexico studying in Canada should enter the address where he or she is living in Canada. Adequate knowledge of Canada, the citizenship test will evaluate your knowledge of Canada. During the written exam and the interview, you will be asked questions about the right to vote and the right to run for elected office, elections procedures, the rights and responsibilities of a citizen, Canadian social and cultural history and symbols, Canadian political history, including the political system and institutions, Canadian physical and political geography, adequate knowledge of language. In order to become a Canadian citizen, the Citizenship Act requires new citizens to have an adequate knowledge of English or French, Canada's two official languages. In general, adequate knowledge means you can understand someone speaking English or French and they can understand you. Next term is admissibility or inadmissible person, when a person is not allowed to enter or stay in Canada. Reasons can include security concerns, criminal offenses, human rights violations, health or financial reasons, and failure to comply with Canada's immigration laws. Next term is adoption, a process whereby a person becomes a member of another family. This process must create a genuine parent-child relationship that permanently severs the legal ties to the child's biological parents or guardians. Next term is affidavit, a document becomes an affidavit when a person signs the document, in the presence of an authorized person, after taking an oath that what the document says is true and accurate. An affidavit is often used in order to verify that a translation of a document accurately reflects what is stated in the original language of the document. Next term is age. When referring to the age of a permanent or temporary resident in IRCC statistical information, for permanent residents, their age at landing and, for temporary residents, their age at entry or on December 1st, next term is annulment, a declaration that a marriage is not valid. Grounds for annulment in Canada include any case when one or both parties were not in a position to legally marry, next term is applicant, a person who submits an application under any of IRCC's business lines, next term is application kit, a package including all forms, supporting documents and information needed to fill out applications for visas, permanent residence and citizenship. It is sometimes referred to as an application kit. Next term is application for leave and judicial review, an individual who has received a decision from IRCC and who thinks that an error was made in that decision can generally apply to the Federal Court of Canada and ask that the court review the decision. Making an application to the court for a review of the decision is called an application for leave and judicial review. A review means that the court will read the decision and decide whether an error was made or not. If the court decides that IRCC made an error, it will usually mean that IRCC has to make a new decision. Next term is application package, a package including all forms, supporting documents and information needed to fill out applications for visas, permanent residence and citizenship. It is sometimes referred to as an application kit. Next term is approved in principle or approval in principle AIP. Your application is approved in principle AIP if you have received a letter from IRCC stating that you meet the permanent residence eligibility requirements. But you still have to pass the medical, security and background checks for you and, if needed, your family members. Next term is arranged employment. Arranged employment is when you have a job offer from a Canadian employer in a NOC 0, A, or B job for a continuous period of one year or more. In some cases, this job offer must be approved by Employment and Social Development Canada or Service Canada, 
Next term is Application Support Centre ASC. ASCs provide biometric collection services for Canadian temporary resident visa applicants in the United States. ASCs do not accept immigrant or temporary resident applications and cannot provide information or application handling services. Next term is assessment, the identification and measurement of learning, credentials, and other forms of qualifications required for entry into programs of study or occupations. Assessment may include testing, examinations, or other prescribed activities, and a process that measures knowledge, skills, and aptitudes. Next term is assessment tools. Refers to guidelines used by citizenship judges for evaluating a person's English or French proficiency to help determine if someone meets citizenship language requirements. Next term is asylum, protection that is offered to persons with a well-founded fear of persecution based on race, religion, nationality, political opinion or membership in a particular social group, as well as those at risk of torture or cruel and unusual treatment or punishment. Next term is authorized representative. There are two types of authorized representatives, compensated and uncompensated. Individuals who receive some form of compensation for their services, either directly or indirectly compensated authorized representatives must be members in good standing with their accredited regulatory body. Individuals who provide such services for free, examples of these individuals include friends, family members, and volunteers or staff members at charitable or non-governmental organizations. In the end, I would like to request you please like the video and subscribe Canada Immigration Explore YouTube channel and also share this video to your friends and family members for Canada Immigration Updates. Thank you, see you in the next video, take care.